Hey, welcome to the Elden Ring Dark Moon version 1.2 walkthrough guide. I didn't make one of these for 1.1 because there really wasn't much going on in that update that needed explaining further than the changelog. Also, I ran out of time, was gonna make a trailer for it, uh, but uh, I got busy with other stuff. I'm still busy with other stuff, but <laughs> now we've got 1.2 out, which is a lot beefier and requires some explanation to things. Not requires, but like, I feel like this is better than reading through a bunch of notes on a changelog. So, first things first, we've got two new classes here, Archer and Dragon Slayer. These come with some uh, overhaul changes to the gameplay in general, um, or just new armor and weapons that I will talk about later. But for now, uh, just know that the Archer, <laughs> I don't know why I said that like that, the Archer starts with a great bow and a long bow, as well as 255 great arrows and 255 poison arrows, and the arrows reach talisman. That's it. That's all they get. Then the Dragon Slayer, you'll notice, has a familiar armor set on. Um, this, the old Dragon Slayer set, and the Dragon Slayer set, which you can uh, alter this into, um, was ported over by KRDCD on Nexus, who very generously let me put their ports um, in, in here. I'm going to be using a lot of their armor ports because they make a lot of them going forward. Um, the Dragon Slayer starts with a Lightning Uchi Katana with Lightning Slash, I believe, um, and a new weapon, which is just a new uh, incantation catalyst called the Dragon Slayer's Chime, uh, which boosts lightning incantations. Uh, they also start with the Lightning uh, Scorpion uh, Charm, Talisman, whatever the hell that thing's called. Okay, so as we load into the chapel here, you'll notice a couple things in the UI. In the top left there, you'll notice that those bars are smaller than you might be used to if you've played Dark Moon a few times. Um, the, the stats on the archer are pretty low in general, just because you're meant to shoot from far away and never really engage. Um, but on top of that, I have reversed Shattered's change to the, uh, the stats scaling early on that... Um, it introduced so it was just making the game like the early game a bit trivial um and i i kind of wanted it to not be that so <laughs> i reversed that to vanilla uh scaling in the bottom right you'll see that i have 50,000 runes instead of 150,000 runes this is a change made to all classes except for the wretch in an effort to incentivize using this statue to make your own class with the wretch but just have it be sort of a a um like a bonus option for uh, for the other classes. So say like you were playing the bow guy and you liked the, the experience of being an archer, um, but you didn't exactly want a great bow or a long bow. You wanted a short bow. Well then, yeah, you could come in here and grab that and some other things for it, but you can't really like completely redesign the class, um, from the ground up. Uh, if you can do that with five items, great. If you can't, oh well. The next thing here is if you try to leave, you can't anymore. You gotta choose a difficulty at the, at the omnipotent statue behind you. That's this. It's also been moved, if you if you're, if you think you're going crazy. Uh, it used to be right here, um, but now it's over here. This is mostly because um, I was getting a lot of complaints or just confusion from players not understanding how the statue worked um, or how difficulty worked, uh, especially those coming from Shattered, not knowing that I had moved it. Uh, but now you, you must uh, choose a difficulty to let the door open uh, the finger that was over here that opened the door before and everything related to it is gone now so that was a multiplayer thing anyway so it doesn't matter uh, so yeah now you'll open the door this way and I'll take this uh, chance to introduce another thing and remind you of, of one thing you'll see that as we leave the chapel all of those runes disappear in the bottom right I didn't spend them so now I don't get to spend them that's a change I made just to um, you know, make it more clear that you are meant to spend the runes at that shop, which is now closed because you've left. To reiterate, that shop is only open in two places at two different times. At the very start of the game, at this statue, and at the end of the game, in quotes, um, it's after you beat Elden Beast at the Ronnie Puppet at Round Table Hold. Those are the only two times that this shop gets opened. All right, we're over here on my dummy character in Gatefront to show some of the gameplay changes. Uh, first up, we'll talk about the bow overhaul. So a lot of people in Elden Ring have complained that the bows are not very strong, and I've made some changes to address that. First of all, all of the bows, with the exception of crossbows, have had their scaling increased um, by a pretty drastic amount. 
uh, this is, you know, just to increase their flat damage. I'm just going to say right now, crossbows in general are not uh, uh, changed at all. Um, they are just crossbows still. <laughs> uh, this is mostly because I plan on introducing bloodborne guns at some point, and they're probably going to be part of the crossbow family. So I'm going to make a change to like all of that when that comes in. Uh, also because like crossbows are kind of moot with the changes I've made to bows in general. So what are those changes? First up, we'll just talk about the, the standard uh, great bow here. The great bow is the one that doesn't have the most changes to it. The damage is pretty much the same aside from the scaling. Um, but it fires much faster now, so you can really, you know, kind of kind of let loose on guys a lot quicker than you normally could. Regular bows are a different story. Um, they fire the same rate, but they now fire three arrows at a time. I completely whiffed that there, but you can see that three arrows are being shot out of the bow at once. Um, this is in an effort to make them sort of status stacking guys, as opposed to, uh, raw damage output. Um, and to that end, all regular bows have had their base damage scaled down. Um, now again, their, their, their scaling, their actual attribute scaling has been boosted up. So on this character's cheated character that has 99 of every stat, uh, it's going to be kind of hard to tell the difference. And again, balance and stuff like that, um, I would love some input on in the Discord. Uh, just let me know if bows are still feeling a little too weak or if they are too powerful. Anyway, the last bow type is the short bow, and this one is just super friggin' fast now. So let me find another guy. I can show you how fast short bows are. These have also taken a nerf to uh, base damage, um, but as you can see, you can just rip into guys now. I can show you barrage. Like it's even, it's even kind of faster than barrage now. <laughs> um, just spamming short bow. Um, but again, obviously, uh, less damage. Hard to tell on this character, but um, and that's also stuff that I would love feedback on. All right, next up we've got the new weapon, the Dragon Slayer's Chime. Nothing too special about this, it's pretty much just a unique seal that uh, um, gets upgraded with somber shards, I'll talk about that later. Um, and, oop, I just not equipped it, didn't mean to do that, meant to do that. Uh, it is meant for the Dragon Slayer class or just anyone who wants to use lightning incantations, uh, it just boosts lightning incantations, um, increases their damage done by it. Uh, and it's, you know, it's the classic Dark Souls uh, chime that you see in all the... All Dark Souls games, and it, you know, makes makes lightning sorceries or lightning incantations do a buttload of damage. Okay, here's a really cool feature that a lot of people requested, um, that I also had plans to include, and now it's in, uh, Time Deflect. So this is something that a lot of other mods like Elden Ring Reforged or Sword Mastery have. Um, speaking of Sword Mastery, huge shout out to F Wang for help with um, implementing this feature. Uh, they, they have a great tutorial on how to do it that I followed. Um, basically, if you block at the right moment, like that, you will, uh, a few things will happen, um, and it's kind of hard for me to explain what those things are while I'm getting beat on by a guy. This works for all shields, and all, pretty much all deflect, or, uh, like, block mechanics, so each type of shield, uh, if you, if you block with, like, a, you know, a weapon, it works as well. I'm messing the timing up here, but... So, there's a couple things that the, the time deflect here is doing. Um, they relate mostly to health and stamina. Uh, for one, when you do a perfect deflect, and you'll know because it makes a sound, and also the person that hit you will take one damage, usually, and they'll get knocked back a bit, like that. Um, let me see if I can proc one of the things. Yeah, there you go. So, you saw in the top left there, that when he hit me, I had pending rally health, and it gave all of it back, and also I got all of my stamina back. Um, the stamina is technically percentage-based, the amount you get back, um, but usually it's going to equate to all of your stamina, um, and it will always be all of your rally health, unless you somehow cheat in like a billion health, um, and you have just so much rally health pending, but yeah, so you can see this guy is just getting clowned on right now. And the other thing is, so if I switch to like a wooden shield here that doesn't have 100% physical resist, um, normally you might get 
hit by a weapon that's piercing through that shield and you'll take damage. Um, when you perfect deflect, you won't take any damage, uh, regardless of the shield you're using or the weapon you're using. You will just get all of that back. And even if you did take a hit, you could still try and get it back with another one uh, with the with the rally health. So, all right. Another thing I wanted to talk about is a really cool thing that some people in the server name Discord, the Souls Modding Discord, um, helped out with. Specifically, Alfonso. Shout out to them. Uh, they kind of enlightened a lot of us in the server about a param called Posture Control, which lets you change the way that weapons are held in certain stances. So the keen eyed among you will notice that my character here is holding this Nagakiba in a way that, that normally in game you wouldn't. Normally it would be held more straightforward. Uh, like, for example, uh, I don't know, here's a, here's a Shotel. Normally it would be held something more like that. Um, but katanas specifically are now held uh, kind of off to the side, sort of more like Ishin in Sekiro or, uh, you know, how you would normally hold a katana. This is true for a left-handed one as well, so you can really kind of kind of look cool, like, whoa, I'm going to kill you or something. I've also had changes to their two-handing uh, pose, which this might look sort of identical to the original two-handed pose. It's, it is different. Um, it's slightly more pointed and, and further out, and this will become more apparent with the the general two-handed change, which is for most small weapons now. They are held off to the side, uh, like in Dark Souls 2 and Demon Souls. Um, this does look a little jank for some weapons, especially if their hilt isn't super long, um, and the first attack of any of these chains is going to look a little off, but I did my best to make it look... Um, as good as possible. So yeah, I just love this so much more. One of my main gripes and one of the things I was really hoping to be able to fix with mods in Elden Ring was that original two-handed pose, um, which again looks more like this. It's not this, but it looks more like this. One more idle change that I can think of right now is that torches, when they're in your right hand, are held up constantly. Um, I actually do want to make a kind of full overhaul to torches at some point just to make them more viable as weapons instead of just tools because I think in Elden Ring there's a lot of cool torches and people just don't use them because, um, you know, you don't think of a torch as a weapon, but they kind of are weapons in this game and I think if I boost them up a little bit and make some changes to them, people will use them more. All right, next up we've got new trails for weapons that have affinities applied to them. So this one is a sacred weapon. Uh, before, when you would apply sacred, the weapon trail that would come out would be white regardless, but now it has a color that matches the affinity. So if you, you see there when I am swinging the weapon, it has a yellow trail instead of a white one. Um, here with this sword, you can see there's a red one. Um, same here with this, you know, golem halberd. It's red instead of, uh, instead of white like it normally would be. All right, the next thing I wanted to talk about was a change to FP regen. Uh, in the 1.0 and 1.1 releases, the passive FP regen I added was at one FP a second, just a flat one FP a second. Now it's 1% per second. So this should helpfully scale with characters like mine here that have a super high amount of mind. So if I just release a bunch of FP here, you can see it's even like fighting it because I have 99 mind. It's going up by a lot um, each tick. Another change that I made was to the way that the Cerulean Amber Medallions work. In Shattered, they granted passive FP regen, but obviously if I'm granting that all the time, there's not really a reason to, um, you know, have the medallions do that. So I gotta use a lot of FP here so I can show this, but basically now on hit, you will get an extra boost of FP in addition to the passive regen. Next up, we've got two changes to Torrent. Um, first up, uh, he throws pots a lot faster, or like you throw pots a lot faster while you're on him. It also kind of, you know, <laughs> speeds you up a bit if you want to go like fast mode real quick. Um, this is just because of the way that uh, Torrent animations work, but this is better for the Friend of Jars class um, if you're just throwing pots. Uh, better than having them come out super slow. Um, and lastly, Torrent can now be uh, summoned in the Elden Beast arena. Just think that this is a, a weird thing that they left out of the original game, um, where it would just make so much sense, like thematically and gameplay wise, to have Torrent there with you as you're killing the final boss. Um, and now you can. And I tried it and it's actually really fun. 
uh, weaving in and off torrent. I, that Fire Giant is one of my favorite fights because of that, because you're, you know, you're, you're running around and you're jumping off and you're like, oh, you, you know, you're switching between the two states and it's, it's a lot of fun. And um, the same goes for Elden Beast now. Okay, the last thing I'm going to show here out in Gatefront is a new giga buff called Elden Soup. Uh, this is a item that it, it sort of acts like the Flask of Wondrous Physic, where it, it refills every time you rest at a bonfire, um, uh, but you don't slot Crystal Tears into it. Essentially what this does is once you eat it, it lasts for two minutes and it gives you one of each buff category. So uh, with the exception of Shield because that didn't really work very well. Um, so I guess one of the th three of the four plus healing. Um, so you can tell on the top there, I am healing. I did get more stamina from it um, and I'm, I am doing more damage. I'm just punching right now, so it doesn't really matter. But the equivalence is the equivalent to four actual vanilla buffs that you get that people normally apply anyway. The point of it is basically to speed up the buffing process that you would do between each attempt at a boss. So instead of, you know, doing Rallying Standard and, and Golden Vow and uh, Blood Boy Aromatic, you know, all, all these things, Braggart's Roar, all this stuff that you would normally do, um, you just one item, eat it, then it's on for two minutes. Or I think it's three minutes. It's either two or three minutes. Full notes of the changelog. <laughs> um, and uh, then you're good to go. It's just easy. Now, how do you get this item? I have hijacked the Shattered's Erdtree Root and Erdtree Essence system. This does mean that the uh, Erdtree Armor and Erdtree Greatsword have been removed. If you want to play with those, please go check out Shattered. Um, but for those unfamiliar, basically the way that you get Erdtree Roots is by killing the bosses at these minor Erdtrees. And the way that you get Erdtree Essence is by killing four specific major story bosses, like Godric or Godfrey. Um, and then you use those to to craft this Elden Soup. Uh, this, it's mostly intended for New Game Plus, or I guess Melania, or whatever you have left in New Game. But in New Game Plus, you know, it just it'll be a huge time saver and makes buffing up before a fight uh, way less annoying. Speaking of bosses, we're here in Roundtable Hold to talk to the Ronnie Puppet for a new mechanic. Boss Resurrection. This comes straight from Vosser's Boss Resurrection mod, a uh, great modder who helped a bit with figuring this out. I actually was going to use their mod to, to implement this in a different way that I wasn't able to, uh, but I decided to just go with their mod pretty much wholesale. <laughs> um, the only changes I made are obviously it's on the Ronnie Puppet in their version. You can do it at any site of grace, but here you have to come to the Ronnie Puppet to do so. Um, and I believe they uh, charge you a Ruin Fragment to resurrect a boss. I am charging you a Larval Tier, uh, which if if you run out, you can buy them here at the Twin Maiden Husks for 50,000 runes. So they are theoretically infinite. Next up over here in the East Wing, uh, we got a few changes to these three new boys um, and the, the fourth regular boy over there. Uh, just a, a quick, like, sort of ease of use thing here. The shop opens immediately after they're done talking instead of presenting you with a purchase, sell, leave menu. So that's just a quick, you know, helpful, helpful thing. Same thing with the Ashmaster here. He has some more changes to him, though. Um, basically, it's, it was a lot of back-end changes that fixed um, the way that Clever's unique Unlocked Unique Skills mod worked, where it would give you... Uh, the option to purchase, or in his version, craft the unlock skill uh, once you pick up that weapon by vanilla means. But because of the omnipotent shop existing in my game, uh, or in my game, I made Elden Ring in my mod, um, it, uh, it, it kind of broke sometimes. So like, for example, if you bought the black knife and if from the omnipotent shop at the start of the game, or even after Elden Beast, but you never got it through vanilla means by killing whatever black knife assassin, drops it um then you wouldn't be able to get the uh the the this this ash of war the blade of death ash of war but now what it's doing is it's checking your inventory to see if you have the weapon at all doesn't matter if 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 you got it by vanilla means as long as you have it in your inventory it will show up in this shop so a uh, huge quality of life improvement there and just you know makes a lot a lot of things more viable at the start of the game 
Lastly, we have Hugh here, who has learned a thing or two about uh, smithing stones. Um, you, he now takes smithing stone shards instead of smithing stones, basically. So, this is just an effort to remove the middleman of crafting shattered smithing stone shards into smithing stones. Um, I felt that that was just, you know, an unnecessary step uh, that could be solved really easily uh, by just having Hugh take the shards to begin with. Um, the way that this works is it costs two for plus one and then another two each uh, level after that. So plus two is four, plus three is six, and so on, um, to the point where 25 plus 25 on a regular weapon would be 50, and plus uh, uh, 10 on a somber weapon would be 20. That is pretty much it for Elden Ring Dark Moon version 1.2. This is definitely the biggest update yet. Um, I, I had a lot of fun making this update. Um, learning some new stuff and, you know, laying the groundwork basically for the actual like big, uh, like content releases that I want to make, um, in the future. I have some ideas for, for th things, adding things for you to do outside of, of actual Elden Ring progression, um, which uh, should be fun and should have some fun rewards. So, that's going to be a lot of work, but this version update is helping with laying the groundwork for it in the back end and also making some of those needed gameplay changes like time deflect and the bow overhaul um, just to make things a little more fun and more viable. So yeah, if you have any questions, please feel free to join the Discord, which will be linked below or hop on the Nexus page. I don't really respond to comments on the Nexus page. I kind of only track the Discord. So if you have a question or, or feedback or a suggestion, drop it in the Discord, not on Nexus. Um, but the download will be on Nexus and there will also be downloads in the Discord as well. So yeah, thanks. Thanks for watching, thanks for playing. Have fun playing in the Dark Moon.